Parents, the Bible says the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. But our souls live forever. Mark 8.36 says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Parents, let me encourage you. I'm not saying don't go play ball. My kids play ball. Don't go do dancing. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, it's better to be involved in stuff and do stuff than to be lazy and sit on a couch all day long. So don't misunderstand me. Let's just straight talk here, parents. Let's quit trying to vicariously live out our dreams and fantasies and lives through our children. At the end of the day, what's most important is that our children know Jesus Christ and know him well. It's not going to matter. Look, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying these things aren't important. But in light of eternity, it's not going to matter how good of a ball player our kids are. It's not going to matter how much money they make one day. We got to start asking the question, how will this affect their souls? We've all been guilty, but if we pet and pamper and indulge our children all the time and teach them by our actions that this world is all that they have to live for and look forward to, then we've missed it. Train those children to live for heaven rather than for earth, for God rather than for man. Then we'll be the type of parents that are called wise in the end. Number eight, teach your children to have a knowledge of the Bible and teach them to pray. Teach them to be faithful to God's church. You might just, you might not be able to write all that down that quick. Bible, pray, and church. God's word is important to God, so God's word should be important to you. And if God's word is important to God and to you, it should be important to your children. In Psalm 138, verse 2, the psalmist says, You've exalted above all things your name and your word. In praying, teach your children how to pray. Don't teach them one memorized prayer. I mean, teach them how to pray. Pray with them and pray in front of them. Pray about real things. I mean, at some point, we got to get past, now I lay me down to sleep, and God is great, God is good. Not that those are bad things, but it's got to get deeper. And then being faithful to God's church. Listen, I, I've been in the ministry 20 years. And look, I can't miss church even if I want to. There's some days I don't want to come see y'all. You don't want to come hear me preach? I don't want to stand up here and look at you. But I, I've been in the ministry 20 years, and I have heard some doozies about why we can't come to church. And I've watched it and witnessed it. I've watched people get involved in other things and do things, and they... And they they group it together with church just like church is just some other activity that's on this even scale or sometimes not even as important as the other things that they do. Like if something else comes along that we've got to be committed to, that takes precedent over that. We can't do this because we've got to go to this. I've searched the Bible over and I don't see that. That's not right and that's not biblical. Exodus 10, verse 9, says, We will go with our young and old, with our sons and daughters, because we are to celebrate the festival of the Lord. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching. 
We don't get together on Sundays just to do it. The local church is important, and there's nothing more important that you as a parent or your children could be involved in and be a part of. Number nine, got two more. Y'all still alive out there? As you train your children, continually remember how God trains his children. God knows our sins, our weaknesses, our special needs. He knows what our temptations are. You're not raising robots. You're not raising ki- you're you're raising kids that when you teach them and you tell them, you count on it they're going to mess up again. But Christ gave his life for the church. He served the church, he disciplines the church, he rebukes the church, he teaches the church, but most of all, Christ loves the church. And we should model that in our parenting. Psalm 145, verse 8 says that the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. I'm going to be honest with you. The first thing I want to do sometimes is get angry and blow my lid, and that's what I do sometimes, and then I realize... But God has been gracious to me, and God has taught me, and he's prodded me, and he's, he's sat, God sat me down many times and said, Murph, you blew that. You were so wrong. And we have to do that with our kids sometimes. And number 10, see your children as a blessing from God. And just straight old Alabama talk, spend some time with them. See your children as a blessing from God and spend some time with them. Jacob said that children are a gracious gift from God. And he said, These are grace, this is a gift of grace that you have given to your servant in Genesis 33. Or look on your children as Joseph did when he said, they are the sons God has given me here. Or as it says in the Psalms, it says that children are heritage from the Lord, a reward from him. Do you view your kids that way? They've been given to you, they're in your watch care for just a little while. So many kids are growing up and they just don't even know their parents. The, the, uh, I read about this recent poll, and it says that the only family activity over the last 30 years that has increased, that families do together, is shopping. That means that we eat dinner less together, we play less together, we talk less together, we don't even watch TV as much together. We just take our kids to the mall more than we used to. And reality is if you're kind of like me and your kids are, and those of you who are already teenagers, you're in that bracket that even when you do that and you do take your kids to the mall, you have to split up when you get there because they're embarrassed to be seen with you. And you just tell them, well, meet me back here at the food court in a couple of hours. So many kids are growing up and they don't know their parents. And we're too distracted, parents. We're too distracted to even know the gift that God has given us. And like I said, I'm one of those that I like to be involved. I don't like to sit around, you know, I want to be involved in stuff and so forth, so on. But not the sake of not knowing my kids and not knowing that Christ is at the center of our home. We have to learn to make priorities. Nothing should take precedence over Christ. So know them and know them well. Realize they're a gift from God. And I would just challenge you, church. Get your kids involved in the most important things.
And that's going to mean, here's just straight shooting. You're going to have to make some decisions sometimes. We're all going to have to. What's most important? What's most important? What's the most important things for my children? We're done. Maybe it gives us some biblical direction. Can I pray over you? Father, teach us from your word. Lord, we went through a whole lot of things and a lot of scripture in the time that we had. I just pray that it's something we can chew on. I pray it's something that we can grow deeper in. I pray that we can get in this scripture even more this week. Lord, I pray for parents out here. Lord, I, my goal was not to stand up here and say that this is easy. My goal was not to say that, that uh, Lord, that, that we can just magic our way into being great parents. That's not it. Lord, my goal was just to simply challenge myself and our congregation to realize our need for you. Lord, to seek to, to grow deeper in our relationship with you and, Lord, to invest that in our children and, and to do the most important things. So, Lord, that's my prayer here. Lord, for every parent, every, every person sitting in here, Lord, there's a different situation and a different struggle in that parenting. Lord, some here are, uh, are, are, are facing some things that others may not and vice versa. But, Lord, you're the God over it all. And, Lord, so just teach us to trust you. Lord, we're going to sing one more song as we close out the worship service. And, Lord, as we sing, as we worship together, Lord, would you just convict our hearts, change us, Lord, challenge us, whatever you need to do. Lord, if there's anyone here who doesn't know you, I pray that they might even come and respond and just say, look, I don't know Christ. I couldn't be a good parent. I don't even know Jesus. And would you tell me how? So, Lord, whatever you need to do in these few minutes as we close out, Lord, would you work on our hearts, whatever decisions need to be made, whatever we need to pray about. Lord, this is your time as we, as we just give you our hearts as we worship. Lord, we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Church, let's stand. Let's sing a song with Scott here. And um, if you need somebody to come and talk to, you're welcome to come and do that. If you want to pray, if you want to sing, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, okay?